Hi trumpet players, I know a lot of you are interested in learning Ghostbusters, so that's what we're going to be working on today in this video. Ghostbusters has some tricky stuff to play in it, but a lot of times the notes that you learn in this song are repeated over and over, so if you learn each section by itself, you should be able to make your way through the song. Like I always do in our lessons, I'm going to try to work from the easiest part of the song working up to the more difficult parts. I'd like to start with the melody at the beginning of the song, and the first line really is the easiest part to play. So I'm going to play through the first line of the song, and then we're going to work on the first section that we need to practice. Now if you look closely at each measure, there are numbers for each measure underneath. They're very, very, very small. So if you look at where I just left off, it was measure number four. What we're going to do is we're going to practice the last four notes in measure four leading up to the first three notes in measure five. Now those two pieces of music are tough to put together, so we're going to separate them and practice each one by itself. First, I'm going to practice the last four notes of measure four. Just to make sure you're in the same place I am, that's an F, F, E, G. What I'd like you to do is pause the video and play that three or four or five times to yourself till you can get it really nice and crisp like I just did. The second step is we're going to play the first three notes of measure five. By now, if you're up to Ghostbusters, you should be very good at recognizing a B flat. On measure five, we're playing B flat, G, and B flat. And yes, the third note of measure five is also B flat. It's not B natural, it's B flat, G, B flat. And that's because the flat symbol on the first B flat counts for the second B as well. So here's measure five, B flat, G, B flat. And if you listen closely, you hear that I slurred the first two notes and I tongue the third. Slur tongue, slur tongue is how it should be played. What I want you to do is pause the video Play those three notes three or four or five times. Make sure the B flat sounds nice. Make sure the slur sounds nice. Once you're really good at those two little chunks of music in measure four and measure five, we're going to put them together. Okay, now if you're good at those two chunks, let's put them together. I'm going to start on the last four notes of measure four. If you need to practice it slower, it's a good idea. You could play it something like this to practice. All right, so the rest of the notes in this section are not difficult to play as long as you can play that pattern. What is difficult is we're going to learn how to count some eighth rests. If you don't know what an eighth rest is, let's find measure five. Measure five is at the beginning of the second line. It goes B flat, G, B flat. It's what you just played. Then you have a quarter rest, which is the squiggly. Then you have a little tiny rest. It's a little slash with a little circle, like a little berry hanging off of it. That's called an eighth rest. And that lasts for half the amount that a normal quarter rest lasts for. So that's a kind of tricky thing to think about and learn through a video. So I'm going to show you a quick and easy way that we can get playing this and counting the rest easily so we don't have to waste too much time. So in measure five, I'd like you to find a pencil if you can, and I'd like you to put a number three under or above the quarter rest. That's the one I always call the squiggle rest. It looks like a Z with a C underneath. Write a number three because that, no that rest happens on count three. Now I want you to take your same pencil and write a 4 above the little new 8th rest. 
So the rests are on count three of the measure and count four of the measure. And that's going to make a lot of sense to you once I start playing it. So let me play measure five and show you why we wrote those numbers and how I'm counting it in my mind. Three, four. So all you have to do to continue on is play G, 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 G. However, you can't wait too long to play the G's and that has everything to do with the eighth rest we just learned. So if you hear me when I counted the rests, I counted three, four. And my four was very quick because that eighth rest is only half the amount of time as a big fat quarter rest. Listen again. Three, four. If you say the four really quick on that new eighth rest, you'll get it every time. In measure six, you're just resting on number three and a four. So could you write, please write a three? and a four above the bigger rest, the half rest that's in measure six. Next, in measure seven, just to be consistent and make sure we don't miss anything, let's write a three above the rest that happens in measure seven. In measure eight, after we shout Ghostbusters, the rests happen on count two. So write a two on the first rest of measure eight. Then write a three on the second rest of measure eight. And then on the new eighth rest, right before the word play, you're going to write a four because that's the four again. So we can jump in and play our eighth note where it's supposed to be. So I'm going to play starting on measure five, the second line of the song, and I'm going to count out loud with my voice the numbers you just wrote in. If you missed a number I just said, rewind the video about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and listen to how... I tell you to write those twos, threes, and four counts on the rests because it makes a lot of sense when you practice it with me. Here's measure five. Three, four. Three, four. Three. Ghostbusters, two, three, four. That brings us to measure nine. Would you please take your pencil and in measure nine, you're gonna write a three above the normal quarter rest, and then a four again above the new eighth rest. In measure 10, you're gonna write a three and a four above the half rest in measure 10, just like you did in measure six. In measure 11, let's write a three above the rest in measure 11. <clears throat> then we shout Ghostbusters. And then in measure 12, you're resting right two, three, four above the rests in measure 12. So follow along with your finger or your eyes. I'm going to start at measure five again. I'm going to say with my voice the counts of the rests. Would you please double check that you wrote the rests correctly? Because if you write these numbers in, I promise it will make this 10 times easier to play correctly. So here's measure five. Three, four. Three, four. Three. Ghostbusters. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Three. Ghostbusters. Two, three, four. Now I'm on 13. So all those new eighth rests are a little tricky to get right on trumpet, and I don't want to get too technical about it, because once you start playing it with a band, once you start playing it with the drummers, it makes a whole lot of sense in your mind and to your ears. So when, once you start getting the tune in your head, it will make a lot of sense. Now that's most of the work that happens on Ghostbusters. So I am going to separate these videos. I'll make a part two for Ghostbusters which explains the rest of the tune. If you'd like to watch this video over again because you still don't have the measure five through 13 mastered, that would be a terrific idea. Five through 13 is a very important part for this song. Work hard, stay healthy, stay safe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.